Okay, now the Labour leader Keir Starmer says his party's moving in the right direction after the Equalities Watchdog said it no longer needed monitoring. The investigation was triggered by failings on anti-Semitism under Jeremy Corbyn's leadership. Um, Dame Margaret Hodge was one of the strongest critics of um, the former Labour leader. She joins us from Westminster now. Uh, Margaret Hodge, good morning. This is a, um, a good day for Sir Keir Starmer. Finally, um, he is taking the party out of special measures. Do you think the job is done? Or has Keir Starmer still got more to do to show the um, Jewish community and more widely that, that he's tackled the scourge of anti-Semitism in Labour? To put it into context, Ed, I think uh, over two years ago, in October 2020, it was one of the darkest days in Labour's history when we actually had our Human Rights Commission finding that there was discrimination uh, and anti-Jew hate within the Labour Party. And if you'd said to me then, it'll, uh, where will we be in two years' time, I would never have imagined that we'd got as far as we have got. So it's one of those areas where I am proud to have been proved wrong. But there's still a long way to go. When you allow uh, this sort of culture of racism to infiltrate your party, to go from the fringes to the mainstream, expelling it, ensuring zero tolerance, takes time changing the culture. We've made fantastic advantage, uh, advances. Keir's leadership on the issue has been superb. But I don't think this is a moment of celebration. I think it is a moment when we just have to take stock, think, and double up on our determination. Yeah, and how much damage do you think has been done by all of this? Because there is the feeling, as you say, more still to be done, that it, that it could be one of those shadows that, that lingers on. And there has been so much upset, so much hurt. You know, high-profile Labour people have been lost from the party as a consequence of it, haven't they? Um, there was massive damage done, uh, you know, to Jewish Labour members. I'm now, at the, at the moment in time, there is me and one other person where the only two women Jewish uh, Labour MPs in Parliament. And if you look back over history, if you go back to the 70s, uh, there were tons of Labour MP, uh, tons of Jewish MPs in Parliament, most of whom, 80, 90 percent of whom were Labour. But I think things are beginning to get better. More than that, I think I just really do believe we've got further than I ever dreamt we could. I was around in the 80s when we were fighting the hard left at that time in the 80s. It took us far longer to get where we are. And we're not just seeing the green shoots, we're actually seeing the blossoming flowers. We won an election in Barnet where there is a very strong uh, uh, Jewish community. We now control the council. We've got Jewish uh, Labour Party people coming forward as candidates. But there is more to do. You cannot take your foot off the accelerator. You, and, and this constant zero tolerance of uh, Jewish hate has to be there all the time. There's a lot that's changed. The complaints mechanism has changed. Complaints are dealt with much more quickly. People who uh, express anti-Semitic uh, 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 views are expelled from the party. We look at what our, who our candidates are. We've had extensive training. And that comes, I think, from strong and effective leadership at the top. Can I just say this one thing? What was really interesting about Keir Starmer was the first people he rang after he secured the leadership of the party were people like me. I was one of the first people to get a phone call. And he promised us at that time that he would uh, show, demonstrate, zero tolerance of, 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 of uh, anti-Semitism. He has done just that. Of course, Jeremy Corbyn, when the um, original EHRC report came out, tried to downplay um, the, the problem. And as a result, he was uh, suspended um, from the Parliamentary Labour Party for a period expelled from the Labour Party, but suspended from the P Parliamentary Labour Party still now. Now, you know, talking about this on this programme, I talked on Sunday about this issue and uh, Jeremy Corbyn, and, you know, three days on, my social media is still full of hard-left people attacking me. Um, what do you think it is around the people who supported Jeremy Corbyn, Margaret, which still means, even today, they can't accept that there was a problem of anti-Semitism in Labour during those years? And is there any prospect that Sir Keir Starmer could bring Jeremy Corbyn back into uh, to full membership of the Labour Party? I can't think of any circumstances at all in which Jeremy Corbyn could stand 
um, as a Labour candidate at the next election. And <clears throat> in an odd way, Ed, I've moved on, the party's moved on, the country's moved on, the voters have moved on. We see that in the support for Labour. And Jeremy Corbyn is stuck in the past. He's entirely a master of his own destiny. He knew what he did when he was leader. He knew how he responded when the EHRC report came out. And <clears throat> he's just stuck in the past. I don't think he's there. And on this issue of, uh, uh, of uh, what, what comes on social media, in the two months following the publication of the EHRC report, until the time of Jeremy's position was uh, settled, I received 90,000, 90,000 mostly hostile postings on, on Twitter and, and, and Facebook and elsewhere. So it, it, it was absolutely, it was a vile time. I think those of us that went through it, it was a really terrible, terrible time. And <clears throat> I think it's not just the anti-Semitism, everything's moved on. You know, the attitude to the economy, our Labour's relationship with business, or uh, in, our, our global attitude, Labour's relationship and attitude to, Na to NATO. This party is no longer the party that Jeremy Corbyn and others try to create. We are a completely different party. It's not a superficial change. It's a fundamental change. OK, and Dame Margaret, talking about <coughs> politics as a whole, something else we've been discussing this morning is the trouble with, uh, you know, the environment created for women in politics. This is something that Nadine Dorries has been talking about. She's warning women against standing in politics because of the negativity that comes with it. Is that something, then, that you recognise? Well, I certainly wouldn't tell women not to stand. I'd encourage them to stand because it's only by engaging in politics that you can uh, change politics. And we, uh, I think the presence of women, I'm sure Ed would agree with this, but the presence of women in the Labour Party, we're now at 50 percent women representation in, in, in Parliament, makes a fantastic change. It's how you approach issues. It's what you think about. And it's tackling the abuse that women face. Women do face more abuse than men. During that whole period of anti-Semitism, Luciana Berger and I got tons more stuff than other prominent Jews like John Burko yeah. or Ed Miliband. Yeah. But we've just got to confront that, think about what's causing it, tackle the causes, and again, show zero yeah. tolerance of that sort of abuse Mark Rogers, wherever thank, it takes place. Thank you so much for being with us um today and um, for um, being so so clear about all of this.